Hey everyone, so today we'll be taking a look at six free Mac apps that you might not have heard of but will definitely improve your experience with a Mac. The first one is self-control. If you have trouble with procrastinating on the web when you should be focusing, this app might be for you. It simply lets you block certain websites. So all you need to do is create a block list for the sites that you find most distracting like YouTube or Facebook. Then you set a timer for the block and that's it. Those websites will no longer work until the timer runs out, even if you delete the app or restart the computer. So make sure you're really committed to that session because there's no going back once you start. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of the default window switching on macOS. When you hold Command Tab on your keyboard, it brings up the icons of the apps that you have open, whereas on a Windows keyboard, you get a little preview of the app that's open. So that could be the current browser window or the folder that you have open. This makes it a lot easier to switch between windows at a glance. So Alt-Tab is an app that brings this behavior to the Mac. When I now hold the Command Tab keys, I will see a preview of each window. I can then toggle between them by clicking Tab, or just hover over the one I want with my mouse. Then if I let go, it will open up the app. It's very intuitive. Also, if, if for example, I have two Chrome windows open, it will show both previews separately. And if there's no preview, that means that the app is currently running, but there are no active windows for it. So if I decide to switch to that, it will open up a new window for the app. Overall, Alt-Tab gives you a clearer picture of what you're navigating to and just reduces some of that friction in your daily workflow. Next up is Vanilla. So if, like me, you have a lot of apps and utilities that appear in your menu bar, you might be frustrated with all that visual clutter up there. And realistically, you're not going to be using most of them regularly. So Vanilla is an app that lets you hide icons that you don't see all the time on the menu bar. Here's how it works. It will give you a little dot and arrow icon on the menu bar. Anything to the left of the dot can be toggled on and off by clicking on the arrow. You can reposition the dot by holding the command key and dragging it around. I can also hold the command key and move a specific icon to the right of the dot. So here I'm making sure that the battery icon is to the right of the dot so that it will always appear. And with that, the clutter is all gone and I have my important utilities always there. Now for an app that is great if you have multiple monitors and you want to control their brightness. By default, the brightness keys on your Mac will only affect the main monitor. But if you want to change the brightness of your uh, external monitor, you'll need this app. With this installed, the brightness keys will work on whatever monitor you have currently active. You can also go into the menu bar utility to see all the settings for your monitors and change those sliders from there. Next is Muzzle. This little app is useful if you're going to do any kind of screen recording. So if you're in a Zoom meeting or a Discord call and you need to share your screen for whatever reason, you don't want your notifications to be shown to everyone. So with Muzzle, it automatically turns on Do Not Disturb mode when you start screen recording. So you can rest assured knowing that there will be no awkward pop-ups uh, during a presentation. And finally, we have Diffusion B. This lets you do AI art for free offline and without limits. If you don't already know about AI art, basically you just type a description of what you want to see, and then the AI will generate a unique image based on that prompt. Currently we have tools like Midjourney and Dali, but unfortunately those require monthly subscriptions. Diffusion B uses the stable diffusion model, which is free and runs locally on your computer. In my experience, I feel like it's not as good as those paid tools as I've just mentioned, uh, and it does take a bit longer. But this is just going to get better and better as AI advances. You can use it to create artwork for personal use, like home decor or wallpapers. Or you can go for commercial projects, like selling t-shirts and posters, as well as social media content. There's a lot of potential here. If you want some ideas for prompts, you can go to lexica.art, which is a website filled with AI-generated images. You can then search for what you're interested in. And you can click on a particular artwork to find out what prompt that person used to generate that. This is a great tool for getting some inspiration. Fusion B also lets you change an image with a prompt. So here you can see how a room might look with a Halloween theme. You can also change a section of an image with a prompt or extend the image entirely. It's definitely a great tool to have on your Mac. Keep in mind though that the AI model is quite large so it will take up a few gigabytes on your computer. So if you're tight on storage, this might not be for you. So that's it from me. Hopefully you found an app that you didn't know about and will be useful to you. All right, take care.